Once again, I welcome you to the Surefire Life Conference platform. This platform that the Almighty God has given to us to make simple, clear, and available the pathway to eternal life. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And no man can come to God except through Jesus Christ. And that's what we have been doing. And we thank God for the theme for this year, 2021, which we have been teaching on since the beginning of this year. Our theme, Greater Victory. Greater Victory. I declare over you and your family that you will continue to enjoy the greater victory that the Almighty God has given you through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Today, we'll look at this topic. We'll continue with this topic. And let's take our usual text, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57. I want you to open your Bible with me wherever you are. I really want you to confess this word. I don't know what has happened in your life so far, but for me, it has been marvelous. I have enjoyed the victory of the Most High God so far in this year, 2021. So let's read it together. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57. One to go. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, when we talk about greater victory, we are talking about the victory that comes through our Lord Jesus Christ and him alone. There is no other man, no other power, no other spirit that can give you greater victory. Man may give you victory, but that will be for a moment. Your team, your group, your company, people, they may enjoy some victory, but that will be for a moment. I love watching football, and uh, I want to make a very simple analogy. You know, last year, if you have been following the English Premier League, you know there was a team that came out victorious, and that was Liverpool. They came out victorious last year. But as we speak, in this year's uh, uh, competition in the English Premier League, uh, they are at number six at the moment, and uh, it doesn't look like they can ever smell that victory this year. And the way things are going, they probably keep moving backwards. Uh, not like I'm wishing them, I'm just making illustration. So, to show that human victory is not permanent, a team that was super last year in the English Premier League is struggling this year. In fact, last year, I think Liverpool recorded maybe one loss only, I think. This year, I mean, they've been beaten by all sorts of teams. Just yesterday, they lost at home. So, human victory is temporary. But the victory that comes from Jesus is permanent. And that's why we are talking about greater victory. It's only Jesus that can give greater victory. Praise the name of the Lord. You see, why Jesus can give greater victory is because he is the highest. His name is above all names. In Philippians chapter 2, verses 9 through 11, the Bible says God has highly exalted him and has given him a name above every other name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, of those in heaven, of those on earth, and those beneath the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ to the glory of God, the Father. Jesus is Lord. Glory be to God. In Revelation chapter 5, verses 8 through 12, if you look at it, the Bible makes us understand that even in heaven, the four living creatures, the 24 elders, and all the angels of God, they fall down before him, Jesus, and they worship him. He is the one that angels worship. According to Hebrews chapter 1, verse 6, Jesus Christ can give greater victory because he rose from the dead and has overcome death, grave, and hell. And he holds the key of hell and death. According to Revelation chapter 1, verse 18. In Revelation chapter 3, verse 7, then the Bible says that he holds, he has the key of David. He holds the key of David. 
He is the one who opens and no one shuts and shuts and no one can open. If Jesus grants you victory, for sure it is greater victory because that victory remains permanent. He is the Lord of Lords. He is the King of Kings. Hallelujah. He is the ruler over the kings of the earth. The one who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and has made us kings and priests to reign with him. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. To him, Jesus, be all glory, all dominion, all honor, all power, all our friends forever and ever. Amen. Beloved brothers and sisters, we are so far covered in this topic, victory for divine health and healing. Victory for divine health and healing. That is victory over sickness and diseases. We have also covered victory over self. That includes victory over sin and all the works of the flesh. <clears throat> you can also interpret that to mean victory for righteousness and power of God. Victory for righteousness, we have said, means fruit of the spirit and victory for the power of God is also the gift of the Holy Spirit. Today we want to look at victory over death and poverty. Victory over death and poverty. I thought this will excite somebody to shout praise the Lord. I thought this will make somebody shout hallelujah. Beloved brothers and sisters, as we established before, through Jesus Christ, we have so much victory that our bodies are no longer susceptible to sickness and disease. And if we continue enjoying that victory, then you know that through Jesus Christ, we have victory over death. We have victory over poverty. We have victory over all evil. Praise the name of the Lord. Of course, victory over death also means that we have victory for eternal life. Hallelujah. Victory for life and eternal life. You know, I told us you have victory over or victory for. When it is the negative, we say victory over. So we have victory over death and we have victory over poverty. Uh, you can also interpret this that we have victory for life and eternal life and we have victory for prosperity through jesus christ our lord glory be to god let's focus on victory over death let's open our bibles first corinthians chapter 15 verses 55 and 56 i read oh death where is your sting <laughs> oh grave where is your victory the sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law. Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, grave, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin. And the strength of sin is the law. Hallelujah. So, Jesus Christ is the first born from the dead. The one who died and rose from the dead. <clears throat> and you see, when we talk about the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, many people don't give a real serious thought to it. <clears throat> because that's why people who dream and see spirits begin to talk about the, those who have gone to heaven. It is not the spirit of man that goes to heaven. Let me remind us of that so you can understand this story. <laughs> Jesus said in the same manner as he went, that's the same manner we will go. So it is the death in Christ that will arise that will rise from the dead. So how did Jesus rise from the dead? That's what I want us to remember again. 
It was his body that was transformed. The body of Jesus Christ was transformed. That's why his disciples saw him. When Mary saw him, he said, don't touch me. When he appeared to them, he said, see, for the spirit does not have flesh like I have. So it is the transformed body. So that body that died, that was buried, put in the tomb, was transformed by the power of God. And so the Bible says that we will not all die. We will not all die, but we will be transformed. We will be changed. Let's look at that in First Corinthians, the same First Corinthians. <clears throat> Paul the Apostle, by the special revelation that he received, God Almighty taught him mystery. <clears throat> he wrote down here. In verse 51, he said, Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. We shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. So when somebody dies and you bury him, he has not gone to heaven. The body has decayed in the grave. I've spoken about his, the spirit before. So you can look at my other videos when I talk about eternal life and you will hear the teaching on that. But know that the body dies. The body that dies has gone back to dust, to, to the earth, decays. Now, think about it. So you know how awesome our God is. It is that body that decayed. Like Lazarus that decayed for four days. That the power of God, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus will come back in and transform that body. It is that body that will go to heaven at the resurrection. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So Jesus rose from the dead. His body that was dead for three days was transformed. It is that body that has gone to heaven. Praise the name of the Lord. And so when Jesus was ascending, angel appeared to the disciples as they were watching him ascend to heaven. They, say, they said to him, this same Jesus that you see going up in like manner, he shall come. And Jesus said in John chapter 14, he said, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. And when I am done, I will come and take you so that where I am, there you will be also. Glory be to God. Jesus overcame death. He rose from the dead by the power of God. Romans chapter 8 verse 11. We have read it a number of times, but let's look at it again so you understand. We are talking about victory over death. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Hallelujah. God who raised Jesus from the dead by the power, his power, the same Holy Spirit of God. He said, He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal body through His Spirit who dwells in you. So Jesus has overcome death and has given us victory over death. And that is why. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 55 said, Oh, death, where is your sting? He was mocking death here. Death, where is your sting? Grave, where is your victory? And then, verse 57 that we have been reading, 
He said, but thanks be to God. Who gives us the victory? Now you understand the victory. Hallelujah. But thanks be to God. Who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ? Beloved brothers and sisters, through Jesus Christ, we have victory over death. The ultimate victory in this life is the victory over death. And for you to have victory over death, that is why we follow the sequence of teaching the way we have been going. Look at what the Bible says in verse 56, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 56. It says, the sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. And that's why we dealt with victory over self, which invariably means to have victory over sin and all the works of the flesh. It also means to have victory for righteousness, to live a righteous life. And we make the point very simple and clear that this is only possible through the Holy Spirit that we receive when we have given our life to Jesus Christ. And the Holy Spirit manifests in us by the fruit of the Spirit, the righteousness of God, and by the power of God, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Praise the name of the Lord. So, when you have overcome sin, then you have victory over death. For the sting of death is sin. The Bible says clearly that the wages of sin is death. The result of sin is death. And there are two aspects of this death. The physical death and the eternal death. The physical death and the eternal death. So let's deal with the physical death. Praise the name of the Lord. Because there are so many people who are afraid of the physical death. Beloved brothers and sisters, through Jesus Christ, we have overcome death in all its ramifications, whether physical or the eternal death. We have overcome death. Praise the name of the Lord. In the book of Hebrews chapter 2, Hebrews chapter 2, look at it with me. Let's look at it from verse 14. Inasmuch then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same, that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is the devil, and release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Can you see that? All their lifetime were subject to bondage. Through the fear of death. Are you afraid of death? Today I decree in the name of Jesus. By the spirit of God. The spirit of life. Be free from that power of death. Be free from that fear of death. Be released. And I command you spirit of death. Lose your hold over that life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus Christ has destroyed you. Devil. Jesus has destroyed the spirit. And the power of death. Glory be to God. So my brothers and sisters, you are supposed to live till you fulfill your days here on earth. And when you are finished, then you sleep. Oh, glory be to God. That's why we don't talk about a Christian, one who has come to Jesus Christ and has received the spirit of transformation as dying. We talk about sleeping. Oh, glory be to God. What a beautiful thing. We are no longer afraid of death. There is no more fear of death. Because Jesus has destroyed him who had the power of death. That is the devil. And has released us from the bondage and fear of death. Let me read it again for you. Hebrews chapter 2 verses 14 and 15. Write it down and read it for yourself. It has more than as the children have partaken of flesh and blood. He himself, that is Jesus Christ, likewise 
shared in the same that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death that is the devil and release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage to they be free from the bondage of death be free from the fear of death in the mighty name of Jesus the apostle Paul when it was his time he knew it he said I have fought a good fight I have kept the faith he says now remains for me the crown of glory hallelujah so shall it be for you so shall it be for me so shall it be for all the children of god that have connected upon this platform and have received the eternal life that only jesus christ did in the mighty name of jesus let's look at a few other scriptures and establish this truth the same happened with peter peter he said, I am about to be poured out as a drink offering. He said, for the Lord has shown me that I will put away this tabernacle. Oh, hallelujah. What a glorious life. Where you come to your end and you begin to celebrate and say, my day is coming. My day is coming. The day of transition to join my Lord and Savior in glory. Oh, look at Paul. While he was in prison. He said, I am trying to choose between two things, whether to leave this tabernacle and be with the Lord or to continue in this tabernacle. He said, for me to die is gain and to live is Christ. Hallelujah. To die is a gain to him because he will unite with his Lord and master in the spirit. But to live, he must pursue the glory of Christ till the end. He must do the work of the master till the end. What a glorious life. You have been given victory over death. Psalm 118, verse 17. He says, I shall not die, but live to declare the works of the Lord. Declare that over yourself. I shall not die, but live. To declare the works of the Lord. I shall not die. But live to declare the works of the Lord. So very quickly. Genesis chapter 6 verse 3. What does the Bible say? This is after the fall of man. And the Lord said. My spirit shall not strive with man forever. For he is indeed flesh. Yet his days shall be 120 years. 120 years. After God declared this. Check the men of God. Moses lived 120 years and died. Check Joshua. Check the rest. Praise the name of the Lord. 120 years. You can live the same. Oh, glory be to God. Isaiah 65 verse 20. What does the Bible say there? It says, no more shall an infant from there live but a few days. No more shall an infant from there live but a few days. Nor an old man who has not fulfilled his days. For the child shall die 100 years old. But the sinner being 100 years old shall be a curse. So make up your mind that you will not die. You will not be the one who will die an infant. Victory over death through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Finally, Romans chapter 8, because we just want to look at a few scriptures. This is the one I want you to keep and keep it very close to you. Romans chapter 8, verses 1 and 2. Emphasis is verse 2. He said, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. This is the key. Who do not walk how? According to the flesh. If you walk according to the flesh, you will die. If I walk according to the flesh, I will die. 
The key is not to walk according to the flesh, but to walk according to the spirit. Which is why last Sunday we addressed it in full. Pick that video again and listen to it. Listen to the entire video on victory over self. It is for you. It is for your life. It is for your transformation. It's not story. It's not theory. It is life. Jesus said in John chapter 6, verse 63, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. Let's come back to Romans chapter 8, verses 1 and 2. So, the key is to walk in the spirit, to live by the Holy Spirit. Come to Jesus Christ and receive the spirit. For your bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. If the spirit of God dwells in you, that spirit is able to give life to your mortal body. Same Romans chapter 8, verse 11 that we read. Now let's look at verse 2. He said, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Sin brings death. Death comes by sin. But when you receive Jesus Christ, you receive the spirit of life. And the law of the spirit of life sets aside, suspends, terminates the operation of sin and the consequence of sin, which is death. So both physical death and the eternal death is overcome by the blood of Jesus. The victory that we receive through Jesus Christ. By the Spirit of God that we receive through Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. I read that verse 2 again. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Have you received Jesus Christ? And have you received the Spirit of God? Then the power of sin and the consequence of sin, which is death, both physical and eternal death, has been terminated in your life, has been suspended, has been removed. Declare over yourself again, through Jesus Christ, I receive eternal life. According to John, 1 John chapter 5, verse 11. This is the testimony that God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his son. He that has the son has life. He that does not have the son of God has no life. You have received eternal life. John chapter 10, verse 10, Jesus said, I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. You have eternal life. Jesus Christ himself is that eternal life. John chapter 1 says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was with God from the beginning. All things were made by him. There is nothing that was made that was made without him. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. The light shines in darkness, and darkness comprehends it not. In him was light. In Jesus Christ, you have eternal life. We have eternal life. Praise the name of the Lord. So you determine how long you want to live. And that life has been given to you. Up to 120 years, you can live if you so choose. The power of death, the one who had the power of death, the devil has been destroyed. Jesus destroyed the devil and has given us victory. Glory be to God. Very quickly, because we want to declare the word, let's look at victory over poverty, which also means victory for prosperity. Jesus Christ is our substitute for everything in life. You must know this if you have come to Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. What does the Bible say there? Let's go there. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. Are you there? If you are there, read it quickly with me. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. That though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty might become rich. 
For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty might become rich. What is the Bible saying here? Jesus became our substitute. He took away our poverty and gave us his riches. God is rich. It's not about the riches of the deceit. Bring your money and sow seed and then you will become rich. Yes, there is the principle of sowing and reaping. So don't misunderstand me. But it's not the way that many people can pass around. Praise the name of the Lord. God says very clearly, he that gives to the poor lends to the Lord. So anything you do for God, God will reward you. No doubt about it. But God has provided blessing of riches to mankind and especially his children under the covenant of Abraham through whom we have received that original covenant uh, through the blood of Jesus. Galatians chapter 3, you have, you have read it several times. I just established that again, verses 13 and 14. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, curse is everyone who hangs on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Through faith. So God has given us prosperity. Praise the name of the Lord. God has given us prosperity and he has exchanged, taken the poverty and wretchedness away. All manner of poverty, whatever form of poverty you can think of. Poverty of the spirit, of the soul, of the mind, of the body, of uh, material things. Jesus has taken it away and has exchanged with the blessing of the riches of God. Praise the name of the Lord. And so the original Abrahamic covenant of blessing has come to us through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I just refer to two scriptures of the principle. So what God has said is that you are blessed. Whatever you do, he blesses it. He blesses the work of your hand. But you have been delivered from poverty. I have been delivered from poverty. Let's look very quickly at Deuteronomy chapter 8. This was even under the law. And we have established that whatever was happening in the law, you have much more blessing. Much more blessing than whatever you see in the law. Deuteronomy chapter 8. Let's start reading from verse 3. So he humbled you, allowed you to hunger and fed you with manna which you did not know, nor did your fathers know that he might make you know that man shall not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the law. Let's jump. It says, for the Lord, your, to verse 7, verse 7 and 8. It says, for the Lord, your God is bringing you into a good land, a land of brooks, of water, of fountains, and, and springs that flow out of valleys and hills. Eight, a land of wheat and valley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, of, a land of olive oil and honey, a land in which you will eat bread without scarcity, in which you will lack nothing. A land whose stones are iron and out of whose heel you can dig copper. Now, here, text. He said, when you have eaten and are full, then you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land which he has given to you. This was specifically to the children of Israel. Well, like I said, the original Abrahamic covenant of blessing has been extended to us through Jesus Christ. Whatever God gave to the Jews, under the law, we have much more abundance in Christ Jesus. Now, verse 11. He said, beware that you do not forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments, his judgment, and his statutes, which I command you today. Lest, verse 12, lest when you have eaten and are full, and have built beautiful houses and dwell in them, and when your heads and your flocks multiply, and your silver and your gold are multiplied, and all that you have is multiplied, when your heart is lifted up and you forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage, who led you through that. I jump to verse 18. 
And you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which is swore to your fathers, as it is this day. He is the one who gives you power to make wealth. But you are blessed. So what did you see there? You saw the people of old going to be beggars because they are uh, ministers and preachers? No. Or because they are, um, uh, 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 you know, I don't know what else to say. But he said God enlarged them. God already made their land rich. God made everything they do to prosper. According to Psalm 1 verse 3, Psalm 1 verse 3, keep it for yourself. It says, man shall live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord in Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 3. So if you then go to Psalm 1 verse 3, how do you prosper? It says, you are like a tree planted by the rivers of water. I am like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth his fruit in his season, whose leaf also shall not wither. And whatever you do, I do, we do, shall prosper. See the consistency of that word and this word, the prosperity of the Lord. So Jesus has taken the place. Please, uh, the last one, Psalm 113. The Lord will lift up somebody in the name of Jesus. Psalm 113, verses 7 and 8. And in fact, read it all tonight. He said, he raises the poor out of the dust and lifts the needy out of the ash heap that he may sit with princes, with the princes of his people. He grants the barren woman a home like a joyful mother of children. Praise the name of the Lord. This is where we want to pray. Now you have seen poverty is not your portion, but you have to walk. So I want to pray. I want to declare the, 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 the word that the Lord gave me to pray today, according to Matthew chapter 10, verse 8. And you know the scripture. This is what Jesus is doing. Jesus is in our midst right now. Matthew chapter 10, verse 8, he says, Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons freely you have received, freely give. Jesus is available to heal you wherever you are. Jesus is available to deliver you from the power of Satan, from whatever affliction there may be. We want to pray. Would you at this point surrender your heart to him and tell him, Lord Jesus, pray with me. I repent of my sin. I give my life to you, Jesus. Almighty God, I ask, forgive me all my sins. And wash me with the precious blood of Jesus. From today, I renounce sin. I renounce the devil. I renounce all forms of evil. And I promise to serve you, Lord. I ask, Father God, give me the Holy Spirit through your son, Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, empower me. Produce your fruit of righteousness in me and your gift. Help me to serve God, to serve Jesus for the rest of my life. In Jesus' mighty name. There is somebody, you have a judgment hanging over your head. I don't know what kind of judgment it is, but this is what the Spirit of the Lord says you address today. And please follow us on, on the teaching here because I am going to teach on this topic soon. However, the judge of the universe wants to set aside that judgment, that conviction, whatever judgment, whether it is spiritual, physical, whether it is in the law court, whatever judgment has been over your life that has hindered you, the Almighty God is overruling that judgment today in the mighty name of Jesus. And so, that person lift up your voice and cry unto God. You have been asking God, send me help. Now cry unto God and say, God, overrule the judgment of man over my life. Overrule the judgment of the devil, the judgment of the wicked over my life. Overrule whatever judgment has been placed over me. Overrule it, Lord. The judge of the whole universe, overrule that judgment. So they acquit me. And grant me your salvation 
in the name of Jesus. And whatever else you want from God, go ahead and pray now. Pray now as I would declare the word of God according to the instruction that Jesus has given. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree over you that the almighty God today overrule every judgment that has been placed over your life, over your destiny, whether you have been locked up in the prison, but you have been crying to God to send you deliverance, to send you help. Today, like Peter was delivered from the prison, the almighty God, the judge of the whole universe, deliver you now. Be released by the power of God in the mighty name of Jesus. You are hereby acquitted in the name of Jesus. You who have been sick, be healed in the name of Jesus. Jesus, the one who cleanses the leper, the one who raised the dead, the one who heals the sick by the stripes of Jesus, we have been healed and I declare you now healed. Jesus is touching every life right now, right now. Everyone that is hearing my voice, hearing my word, Jesus is touching your life. For I come not by myself, but as he has said, freely you have received, freely give. Jesus himself is touching your family, is touching your children. Receive that deliverance. Receive deliverance from every oppression of the devil. Receive deliverance from every of your oppressors. In the mighty name of Jesus, you have not been able to sleep right now. Receive deliverance and you will sleep like a baby this night. In the mighty name of Jesus, whatever oppression, of the enemy has been afflicting you right now. I command that oppression in the name of Jesus to be taken away, to be removed from your life, be set free from that oppression in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive your healing, receive your healing. Get out of that sick bed in the name of Jesus. Like Jesus said to the paralytic, take your bed and go home. So I say to you in the name of Jesus, Get out of that sick bed. Get out of that sick bed and go home and go home and serve Jesus and praise the Lord. Thank you, Almighty God. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. And in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Whatever you have asked the Lord to do for your life today, do in your life and your family. Right now, I agree with you that the Almighty God. According to his will, in the name of Jesus, grant your heart's desire, grant your prayers and your requests. Receive answers to your prayers now. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. And in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. God bless you, brothers and sisters. So I pray that this week you will enjoy a greater victory that only Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior can be in all areas of your life, you and your family. And in this year, 2021, you will continue to enjoy that greater victory that God has given you. Receive the victory in Jesus' mighty name. God bless you.